the Drum Theatre in Birmingham today? We are attending an event held by the UK Youth Parliament concerning climate change. We're now going to speak to Melody Hosseini, one of the organisers of the event, and find out a little bit more about what's actually going on today. So Melody, we're here in Birmingham at the UK Youth Parliament event discussing the issue of climate change. Can you tell us a little bit about your role within the UK Youth Parliament and also a little bit more about today? Okay, basically I'm a co-founder of the organisation and also a trustee for West Midlands, which is the uh, region which this event is taking place. I also work for the National Youth Agency as a project officer in the participation team, so that's what I do. Uh, climate change is one of the projects that I manage, so it's a particular kind of passion to me uh, being here today. Uh, this event is extremely important. Young people of West Midlands have chosen this in the UKYP to concentrate on climate change for their event, and uh, so that's what we're here to do, look at why climate climate change is happening, having discussions across region and also looking at ways in which we can take initiative and really take action on this as young leaders on climate change. Weapons of Sound are also here today, the UK's most eco-friendly band. Their instruments are solely made out of other people's rubbish and recycled material. There's also a number of other presentations, videos and workshops going on throughout the day to enlighten people further about some of the dangers caused by climate change. I think what's really interesting is that people have been quite struck by what, what's actually happening. You know, we've shown some really kind of moving DVDs, some images of, uh, you know, uh, tragedies around the world, which, you know, we see all the time. But actually, when it's, when it's seen and you're sitting there and it's kind of hitting home, it quite, you know, it's quite striking. And I think young people have come up to me a lot and made comments about how that's really affected them and how that's really motivated them to take things back to their areas and take initiative. So I'm very happy about that. I think climate change is a big problem, but I didn't know how big it was until I saw some of the presentations in there. But some of those videos really did touch me, like when it like, showed uh, the maps like where the ice caps are just going, it really did touch me and it's just showing me how big a problem it actually is. So when I was young, I always used to think global warming was sort of more an old man of grey hair and suit and tie thing rather than actually something that's around us. It's more what politicians talk about, it doesn't really, it's not going to affect me, I'm living up on high ground and everything. But now, as you learn the causes and what's going to happen from it more, then you start to realise there's actually more around us and affecting us. I think there's been a big shift in the last couple of years. I think people are talking about it in a way that they weren't a couple of years ago. But, you know, the people with the biggest stake in making sure that we get the answers right are our young people. They are the, the decision makers of tomorrow. They will have the intelligence, the analysis, the insight, the enthusiasm. We have to harness our young people to actually make sure that their voices are heard, to say, look, we cannot shut our eyes to this. We have to take action, and we have to take action today. The thing that Friends of the Earth has done over the last three or four years is that we've run a campaign called the Big, Big Ass Campaign. The Big Ass Campaign is, is calling on the UK government to introduce a climate change law, a climate change act. And it is going to do that. This summer, we will have the Climate Change Act in the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom will be the first country on the planet to pass a climate change law. I think we've got very ambitious targets in place. We want to cut carbon emissions by, uh, to 60% at 1990 levels by 2050. And that isn't just warm words. We're putting a government bill behind it to make sure that it happens. And as part of our plans, we want to see 20% of our energy coming from renewables by 2020. So there are big things that we have to do, but actually if we're to deliver change on this agenda, we have to do all the little things as well. We have to change the way we live, we have to change the way we travel, we have to change the way we work in business. That will take young people, their ideas, their thinking, their energy, their enthusiasm, if we're to make the shift we need to. If you ask me if it is enough being done, my answer is no. I don't, I don't think any of us are doing enough, actually. The, the threat is so high and the, you know, the, it's so imminent. I think whatever we're doing at the moment is definitely not enough. If you look at the levels that it's actually rising at the moment, we need to be matching that and then some to actually start decreasing those risks. So no, I don't think the government is doing enough. You know, the climate change bill is going some way, although we need to take this a lot more seriously. But then again, it's not just government. It's all of us, it's you, it's me, it's, it's everyone. We all need to take this seriously, take it to our homes, make it a part of our everyday behaviour. So I think we need to accept some responsibility as well. But it's, it's government also needs to do a lot. They've got a huge responsibility and a great role to play. 
And how long do you think it will be until the UK is completely carbon neutral or close Never. to carbon? Never. 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 I don't know about it being completely carbon neutral, but at the minute the government are actually proposing, they're passing a bill in the next couple of months to, um, by 2050 they say they want to cut um, carbon dioxide emissions by 60%. We actually don't think that's enough because aviation and shipping is not included within that. And our actual um, campaign recently has been to try and get that raised to 80% because we think 80% by 2050 is a good figure to be aiming for. Clearly, if we're going to tackle climate change head on and some of its negative consequences, the price is going to be high. But can we really afford it? I think the issue here is uh, not whether we can afford. We are, we are the fourth or fifth most developed economy on the planet, so we can afford to do it. It's whether we have the political will to actually choose to do it. We could all not buy a motor car and cycle and walk but a lot of people choose not to. At the end of the day, if there's no planet left for them to live on, then there's nowhere for them to spend their money anyway. And I think it's important that the government stops subsidising things like the um, airport fuel tax and puts more kind of taxpayers' money into things like trains and public transport. Today we spoke to a wide spectrum of people, be it MPs, activists, academics and young people. And there does seem to be a broad consensus amongst them all that climate change is real and it is happening and we need to act now.